My role is to support escalation engineering at Microsoft. I encounter quite a lot of issues from the customer's accountant on a day-to-day -day basis. And what I'd like to do is share some of that experience and knowledge with you to hopefully make your experience of deploying to Azure a lot easier and better. One of the most common misconceptions I find with customers is the, the concept that Windows Azure is a stateful environment, which means that uh, they can save information on the C drive or the hard drive. One of the features of Windows Azure is the fact that it is a stateless environment, which means that if, for example, there was a hardware issue, we would spin up a new uh, OS and then deploy your application to it. Because this is a stateless environment, what that means is that if you have saved in information on the C drive, that information could be lost. And finally, another example is uh, with every service that you deploy in Azure, you'd have a virtual IP address and all requests would go to that virtual IP address and then be load balanced between the number of instances you have deployed, which means that if you've stored data locally on the hard drive, a hard drive, you're not guaranteed that the next request would actually go to that same VM, therefore you won't have access to the same data. One of the reasons it's stateless is because it means that you can easily provision a lot more servers if you need to, so you could be running with two instances one second, change a configuration file and have access to a hundred machines. So and that means that you'd actually have a, a clean VM that would be spun up and then basically your application code would just be copied upon it. What it does mean is uh, because of the round robin, because of the virtual IP address, if you've got a hundred machines, uh, each request would go to the next available machine in a round robin fashion, which means that you also need to save any state that your application is reliant upon in somewhere like, say, if for example, SQL Azure or Azure Storage, so that all your instances have access to that data. Uh, another reason that stateless is mean that you don't have to worry about an OS update, and we will always be, if you set it to an automatic update, you'll always be ensured that you're on the latest OS and don't have to worry about administrating it. Another example of when you can have issues is if you remotely RDP onto the VM and change settings or install drop DLLs on there. You just have to be aware that if there is an update or there's a hardware failure, those configurations can be lost and you would have to redo them again. Uh, another example is because Azure is stateless, it means that you need to make sure that when you deploy your package, everything that you need to be on that VM is delivered as part of that package. So if you have something that's running in a local environment emulator, it may work on your machine, but then when you deploy, it may not work. And that's because you need to guarantee that everything is in that OS. So what happens is you can have a startup task that could do configuration or an executable that runs or installs software and then this is actually run as part of the deployment so before your code actually runs it that is reliant on the DLL or the configuration change that startup task will run those changes will be made and then your application will just run fine testing, testing the application the way you hope it's going to scale in the future I think is very important because what it can do is it can find any bottlenecks or issues in your architecture and the sooner you do it, the better, because potentially you might have to change how your application is architectured. Uh, an example may be if you have two instances and you've test and those instances interact with storage. It may be that you need a throughput of X, and you know with two instances you, you can you can get a, a throughput of Y, and therefore if you do a calculation, you know that you need say a hundred instances to get the throughput you want. But what it might mean is you've actually then got a bottleneck, for example, and currently within. Windows Azure Storage, you have a, a, something like 5,000 requests per second limit. So you may not be hitting that limit if you're testing with two VMs. But if you go up to 100 VMs, you actually may hit that bottleneck and actually see slow performance. So I'd recommend testing as soon as you can at the scale you need and with the load you in, envisage and countering with your application so that you can actually find bottlenecks that exist before you go live. So another issue with regard to testing is it, it can be easy to test in the local environment because you can just have Visual Studio running and you can just do breakpoints and you can step through the code which just makes it easier. Obviously it can be a bit more difficult when you have this deployed in the, the cloud. So one thing I would say is always have RDP enabled which means that you can easily get onto the machines and you can look at logs. Also we have Azure, Azure, Azure Diagnostics which I will also recommend that you can turn on because uh, that will allow you to 
write all the sort of logging that you have, like performance counters or trace listeners you can have, and that will actually, you can save it to Azure Storage, which means that you can actually go and see all the performance and all the logs from all your different instances in one single place. And what you can do is if you're doing it in there, say in the dev environment, you can increase the log level that you need, and we can trans you can set the transfer of how often you want to transfer data from your VMs to Azure Storage. And once you go to production, you can then change that, that setting so you actually copy less logs less frequently. So within uh, Windows Azure, you've got a couple of different options for storing data. One of them is SQL Azure and the other one is Azure Storage. So we do see quite a few issues with SQL Azure and one of the main issues can be connectivity. And what this means is that uh, you may have connection to the database and then it's just dropped. And there's normally a couple of reasons for this. The first is that uh, SQL Azure is a multi-tenant environment, which means that multiple users are using the same physical hardware and therefore there is potentially a limit on the resources, either memory or CPU. So there can be a soft throttle, which means maybe if you're the user that's uh, using up all the resources, you would be throttled and say retry in say 10 seconds. Uh, the other issue can be it could be hard hardware throttle, which means that everyone on that physical machine would actually be throttled because there's just the physical machine just can't cope with the resources it's needed. So one important thing is use retry logic so that if you do get a connection drop, you just need to reconnect again. So it's just programming in a way that's more uh, fault tolerant to cope for uh, losses and drops and connections. So one of the important things to note about it, Windows Azure that is even in Azure Storage and Azure SQL Azure we have three copies which mean that we will help with if there's any failover issues so if there's a, a hardware failure where your data is stored so you can always have access to it but what it doesn't allow you to do is do disaster recovery so for example if you're if you were to delete records those deletions would actually be replicated between all your different databases copies so you really need to think about a point in time backup strategy to ensure that uh, if you ever needed to restore data, you can do that. So just to summarise, the three main areas I think you need to be aware of when you're deploying to Windows Azure is first, the fact that Windows Azure is stateless rather than stateful. Two, test as soon as possible, especially if you want to scale up to large numbers. And finally, think about a disaster recovery strategy and how you do point-in-time backup, either for SQL Azure or Azure Storage.